is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 20th day of February in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Guyana's First Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sir Shridat Ramphal, today issued a call for all Guyanese to be united as the country faces the beginning of the proceedings at the International Court on the border controversy with Venezuela. Speaking at the dedication of the new Ramphal House Protocol building, Sir Shridat reminded that in the 50th year of the Republic, all Guyanese must stand united against the baseless claim by its neighbor. The proceedings on the 23rd of March and the Hague will be about that destiny. It is my plea to all fellow Guyanese that between now and then we do nothing to impair that destiny. On the 23rd of March, Guyana will be making its case before the International Court of Justice in The Hague. The initial hearing will focus on the jurisdiction of the court to hear the matter. Venezuela has repeatedly stated that the court has no jurisdiction and it will therefore not be taking part in the hearing. But Guyana will be moving ahead with the case. Sir Shredat Ramphal is a part of Guyana's legal team. He said as Guyana faces upcoming elections, Guyanese must not stray away from the meaning of the nation's motto. And President David Granger, in his address at the rededication ceremony this morning, also spoke about Guyana's road to republic status and the important role that the Foreign Affairs Ministry has been playing over those years. The President said the practice of diplomacy and the professional foreign service are the hallmarks in protecting the national interests. Diplomacy requires a core of educated and dedicated diplomats, a professional foreign service Possessing a proficient cadre of career diplomats is obligatory for the promotion and protection of the state's national interest. The concept of the national interest of any state, rendered in French by the words raison d'etat, is not, as Bismarck would have said, not an exact science. More news coming up in a moment. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Guyol Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Because the road brand new, the school brand new, the street like the culvert, the bridge done do, got the government too, the sky hey, blue, one people... Hey, could really let like, you know, master we get some first degree. That's a lie. You know, he say family left him money. We know that's a lie. But y'all hear this one, you know. The man said, Oh, we give we 20,000 out flats in Linden. What? Hey, are you from Linden? There's a blatant lie. Well, he said you opened back the estate. <laughs> well, that's a sweet lie. Yo, so what if I said that though? If you here, you do nothing in four years? This is the biggest lie. Watch. You ask this, this son is by here, man. He ain't no leader, no. You're right. That man is not a leader. That man is a liar. Line me up like come out this place, boy. Don't stop the progress. Moving forward. 
That was a paid political ad. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing that he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the disciplined services, connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer, engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on elections day, a duly appointed candidate at the election, and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on election day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated can also vote by proxy. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from the returning officer for the electoral district in which the application is being made from the 14th to the 21st of February 2020. Applications must be submitted to the returning officer no later than the 21st of February 2020. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779 or 223-9653. Visit the GCOM website at gcom.org.gy. Email pro at gcom.org.gy org.gy or visit the nearest GCOM office. Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. Our military is at the heart of this nation, and just like you serve us, we will continue to serve you. Under the experience of Brigadier Retired David Granger, we have increased the salaries of joint services over the last four years. We have invested in opportunities for quality education so that more ranks are being professionally trained and our special units have been re-engineered. We have modernized the forces, transforming it from dormant and non-performing to a prestigious force in the Caribbean. Better equipment for protecting your families and our nation. Moving forward, we will continue to protect your rights as we focus on your personal development and welfare. This means improved salaries, more specialist trainings, better vehicles and equipment, a new National Police Academy with regional branches, and investing in technological solutions in order to reduce crime. This in addition to continuing the work we have started, improving our operational structure, building new accommodations, and providing improvements to all bases. And finally, every rank must be a homeowner. We will support you in the acquisition of land, with support acquiring loans, and help in construction. With your vote, this will become a reality. As you stand for us as a nation, we will continue to stand with you. Joint services vote this Friday, February 21st. Stand with Granger. Vote APNU AFC. That was a paid political ad. The government of Guyana has purchased its first fully electrical car as it continues to push to encourage safer environmental practices. The Nissan Leaf motor car has been procured by the Guyana Energy Agency and has been used for several weeks by the agency, according to its head, Dr. Mahendra Sharma. The GEA is recommending that every government ministry adds at least one electric car to its list of vehicles. He explained that it's cost efficient and saves money while protecting the environment. The plan is um, to look at this and recommend to government. I think, I think we know enough to say to government, let us place one of these in every ministry and in every government agency almost immediately. I think the technology is where it needs to be. Um, I intend, I, I have placed in my 2020 budget and subject to budget approval, um, we're going to install charging stations at, in the four main areas of Guyana so that persons who are investing in these technologies have access to the facilities. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson was on hand this morning to witness a test drive of the electric car. He praised the move and said it is in keeping with the government's Go Green initiative. We, we, we speak about um, going green, the uh, e-mobility, e I mean that is the whole part of the whole um, essence of the whole move to go green, um, the transportation, transportation is, is the second largest emitter of, um, of harmful gases. So we have to look at this, this is a start and then hopefully um, what we learn from this, um, this first trial, we can be able to input it into 
future um, purchases. Guyanese are being encouraged to import electric cars since there are a number of tax exemptions that they will enjoy with the import. Well, with the aim of creating alternative methods of punishment for juveniles caught breaking the law, the government of Guyana through the Ministry of Public Security has teamed up with UNICEF and several non-governmental organizations to launch a partnership on diversionary options. Public Security Minister Kemraj Ramjitan said jails are not a place for children and therefore it is important to keep them away from becoming involved in crime and to also have systems in place that could give them a second chance. The search for alternatives to imprisonment, alternatives to detention, whether it's NOC or jail, we wanted to see that. Jails are not the place for our children and the substantial majority of our young people who have committed offenses must not be there. Oh yes, the very serious ones and where we cannot, in a sense, ensure any other alternative and well, of course they will have to go there. We wanted a humane alternative to incarceration for young law, young law breakers. And that is why the emphasis was put on diversionary measures in a big way in that act. Diverting juveniles away from the formal court procedures Minister Ram Jatan said learning platforms ought to be created to give them better opportunities also. We see these sanctions and diversions as creative methods for our young people who would have broken the law. And the imaginativeness and the creativity will also continue because as you meet these young people, you can come up with far more creative things and ministers can, or even magistrates. Uh, and it is important then that we utilize our director of youth, our director of juvenile justice, the juvenile justice committee, the partners to come up with these innovative methods so that we can take them away from the stigma of Jails. The initiative has been welcomed by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan since she believes children must be treated differently than adults. Children must be treated different from adults whenever they come into contact with the law. Regarding the alternative measures, the magistrates must be commended thus far for using their initiatives in some instances to ensure that some measures and non-traditional means were put in place to ensure that those children who appeared before them were given access to education, rehabilitation, and prepared for reintegration back into society. Guyana passed the Juvenile Justice Bill back in 2018. The private sector commission today called for Elections Day to be declared a national holiday to allow persons to fully exercise their franchise. The call by the private sector came one day after the Education Ministry announced that schools will be closed on Elections Day, the 2nd of March. Although the government has not made the formal announcement of Elections Day being declared a holiday, it is moving in that direction. Public Security Minister Kemraj Ramjatan said it is being contemplated this morning. Guyana will head to the polls on the 2nd of March. The members of the Discipline Services will be casting their ballots tomorrow Friday. Well, as the political parties enter the home stretch with their campaigns, the Carter Center has issued a call for them to refrain from provocative speech. In a statement today, the Carter Center, which has been monitoring the campaigns, said it is concerned about the elevation of rhetoric on the campaign trail. According to the Carter Center, the introduction of a code of conduct by the Ethnic Relations Commission was a welcome initiative and that code calls on all parties to refrain from using any words or engaging in actions that might stoke tension or be offensive. All of the parties competing in the upcoming elections have signed on to that code. The observer group noted that the political campaigning has been peaceful, although observers have heard allegations of isolated incidents of harassment of supporters of both the ruling coalition and the opposition. Meanwhile, the Carter Center statement also focused on the preparations for the elections. Based on its observations, the Carter Center said it has noted that the preparations have been going well. 
On the issue of tabulation of results, the center noted that while the procedures are covered by law, it is concerned that those procedures have not been made clear to key stakeholders. The Carter Center believes that clear and detailed explanations and procedures are critical, and GCOM ought to publicize and distribute the existing procedures as widely as possible, including to all political parties, civil society organizations, the media, and electoral observers in order to clarify any misunderstandings and avoid disputes over the process. The sod was turned yesterday afternoon for the construction of two more branded hotels at Ogle, a short distance away from where a new AC Marriott hotel will also be built. The latest project, which will carry the Hilton brand, will see just over 100 million US dollars being invested. At the sod turning yesterday, Finance Minister Winston Jordan said the country's economy continues to grow and attract new investors, especially in non-traditional sectors like tourism. He welcomed the hotel project and the jobs that it will create. This investment will, in a significant way, provide jobs to locals as well as build capacity in the tourism sector and even more tangible ways bring hope for the future. A new community will arise from the ashes, so to speak, trees and swamps and sugarcane, in much the same way that a new dawn is beckoning for all Guyana. The two hotels will be built with a solar farm and a miniature golf course on 20 acres of land. An overseas-based Guyanese is among the group of investors leading the project. The real estate entrepreneur Edmund Braffitt said he's pleased to be part of the investment in his homeland. Everything you see here, the end result of this, is a culmination of the work done by a group of Guyanese. We didn't do the business plan. It wasn't done in the United States of America. It wasn't done in Washington. It wasn't done in New York. It was done right here in this country. So when you speak of local content, this is the epitome of local content. It is Guyanese who put this entire proposal together. It was Guyanese who saw it from the beginning to the end. So you should give yourselves a round of applause for that. And his business partner, Mike Elliott of Energy Real Estate, said the investor's vision is to transform the Ogle area. And that is what they'll be working towards. It's our vision that this site will be a focal point for the Ogle area and to master plan a well-designed mixed-use commercial project. Currently, we anticipate two internationally flagged hotels with associated um, as amenities. We're also seeking office and retail users and will develop several build a suit properties to ensure a well-balanced project. The government's holding company Nissil brokered the deal. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right hi i'm andrea farnham and i'm from mabrumo region one i have been attending this college for the past month it is a one-year course this is actually the fourth batch of students. I'm part of the fourth set of children that have passed through this college. So this opportunity that it has presented, this college has presented, where they train us to be better public servants is something that I see will be beneficial in my life, not only professional-wise, but personally. This is a wonderful initiative by the Ministry of Presidency that enables us, myself and my peers, to grow professionally. I'm David Granger, and I approve this message. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing that he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the disciplined services, connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer, engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on elections day, a duly appointed candidate at the election, and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on election day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated 
incapacitated can also vote by proxy. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from the returning officer for the electoral district in which the application is being made from the 14th to the 21st of February 2020. Applications must be submitted to the returning officer no later than the 21st of February 2020. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779 or 223-9653. Visit the GCOM website at gcom.org.gy. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit the nearest GCOM office. Things really moving fast in Guyana and we all got to keep up. In 2015, I didn't even get to vote because I was in the bush. And my boss demanded everything to make sure I couldn't come out in time for elections day. I couldn't even get somebody who voted me a proxy. This year, I take in charge. I am voting because it is my right and I want to have my say for Guyana's future. March 2nd, I am ready. I'm David Granger and I approve this message. That was a paid political ad. Across the region right now, CARICOM leaders have agreed to send a fact-finding mission to Haiti in a bid to finding a solution to the ongoing social and political unrest in the French-speaking CARICOM member state, where opposition parties are demanding the removal of the president. The mission will be led by CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin the Rock and will include representatives from the Bahamas, Jamaica and Barbados. The president of Haiti was among several Caribbean leaders who did not attend the two-day intersessional summit, which ended yesterday today. The opposition parties have accused Moïse, who came to power back in 2017, of corruption and have been staging street demonstrations in support of their demands for him to step down. While Canada is hosting foreign ministers from more than a dozen Latin America and Caribbean countries opposed to Venezuela's socialist president Nicolas Maduro, amid growing signs that a Western-backed push by the splintered Venezuelan opposition to remove him is sputtering. The meeting of the Lima Group in Quebec comes amid a renewed push for a new presidential election in Venezuela and attempts to drum up international support for the flagging opposition movement. Canada and nearly 60 countries recognize opposition legislator Juan Guaido as Venezuela's legitimate leader and view Mr. Maduro as an illegitimate president who stole his country's last election. And finally tonight, international news. A man has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after a stabbing inside a central London mosque. The victim in his 70s was injured in an attack at the London Central Mosque near Regent's Park which police are not treating as terror related. He was taken to the hospital by paramedics where his condition has been assessed as not life-threatening. A 29-year-old man was apprehended by worshippers who broke from prayer to restrain him until the police arrived. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.